doki, Apollo. Are you ready? Are you ready? Hi everyone, it's Anthony, back with another video here on Single and Beautiful View and Placing. <laughs> Hi. So we are uh, going for a little vlog or a little walk slash hike. We've been on this hike before. We had to run across the street to get over there, but um, this is the same hike I went on when I answered Mia's tag questions. Um, it's just next to, come on, the dog park that I take Apollo to, but it's got a really pretty view of the foothills up here. Um, it's called Forsberg Park, and I don't know the name of the trail that we're going on, but the the dog park in this little park area is called Forestburg Park. Um, but yeah, so we're not doing the dog park today, which is probably going to upset Apollo because we have to walk by it. But we're going to go under this tunnel and do the hike instead, get some exercise in. Right, buddy? He has just been, he's got extra energy recently. I don't know if it's the change in food or or what but he is extra sprightly and bouncy and usually when i'm working from home he will just pass out all day or just lounge around all day and then he knows when work's about done usually right around three o'clock is when he's like okay hey buddy come on um He'll be like, okay, time to go, but like, now it's like at noon, he needs like a lunchtime walk to let some energy out too. Hold on. Um, but yeah, he seems to need like extra, extra walks, extra play time. So he went from a really high energy puppy to like a little bit more subdued there for a while. And now he's back at it, back at it. There are a lot of dogs there today. Holy moly. It's a lot of dogs, huh? <laughs> um, come on, let's go. This way. This way. Okay, you didn't freak out as bad as I thought you would. It's not too bad. Um, so yeah, we're just going to go on this hike. Chit chat a little bit. Um, I, I actually had filmed a good portion of a vlog last night. Um, we went to the Flatirons Vista Trail that we normally go on, but by the time, I, I had to work a little bit late yesterday, and by the time we got there, it was already getting dark, which, you know, happens early and earlier this time of year. So it was only like 5 p.m. and it was already like dark, so, um, so I started filming anyway. I was like, well, let's, we can just do a, you know, nighttime filming or dark filming. I've done it before, especially once again, this type of year, it's gonna happen. But um, I kept getting distracted because I was scared. <laughs> um, you know, walking through the little wooded area and it was just Apollo and I. And I kept like thinking I was hearing things I was like, I keep getting distracted because I don't know like who or what's around us. And so I was like, it's fine. And then my mom called at a certain point during the, the walk. And so I was like, well, I'll, I'll answer it. I'll get off the phone with her and then I'll keep the vlog going. But we chatted for the rest of the walk all the way till I got back to the car. So, I was like, eh, it was pitch black pretty much the entire time. Plus, I didn't get to finish chatting. So I was like, eh, let's just, uh, is this right? Is this right? Uh, I think we can go this way. I think is what we want. Let's go this way. Come here. OK. 
Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, so that's a maintenance road. Um, do we want to do the reverse of what we did last time? Or the same route? We might not do the whole thing, Apollo. We might just do out and back. Let's, what do you think? I don't know. I don't know what decision to make. Let's go this way. And then if we turn around, we turn around. Come on. Hey, hey, I don't want to do that right now. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Come on. Hey, you're not off to a good start. You're not off to a good start. Let's go. Okay. Hey, I don't want to do that. He wants to play and I don't want to play. <laughs> Just go. Um, so, yeah, I was like, eh, I'll just film it again, or I'll try again tomorrow when we go on our, our hike today. So that's what we're doing. And we're going backwards from how we hiked on this trail last time. And I'll probably just do a mile up and a mile back because I, I don't feel like hiking in the pitch black today. So that should give him enough exercise. And depending on the situation, maybe I can let him around the dog park on our way to the car. Come on. Let's -a go. But yeah, I hope everyone's doing well. Don't forget to leave in the comments how things are going for you. Uh, I think the last time I did a vlog, we, I don't remember where we were. <laughs> we were somewhere doing a vlog. And I think that was about a week ago. Maybe slightly less. It's Wednesday the 15th at the time of filming this. So 15th of, 15th of November. So I don't remember when the last one was, but it's been at least a few days, if not a week. And we're just out here moving and grooving, get some exercise going. There's where we parked across the way there. Good boy. You're good at peeing, huh? Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's just been extra feisty extra energy, extra bouncy recently, but I, I don't mind it. I think it may be because we have been walking and hiking and running more. So he's just getting accustomed to that. So when we don't do it, he's like, what the heck? We got to do the thing. So it's fine. I don't mind it. And it's getting me more exercise. So yeah, as far as, uh, life stuff goes work is work is work <laughs> um my coworker who's on vacation gets back tomorrow and i'm so happy for her to get back and to take all of her 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 work back um it's been a little chaotic um you know we all have our different working styles and organization styles and but um but we're supposed to be pretty uniform on how we treat our different trackers and like our process is supposed to be the same. So no matter which recruiter you're working with, you have the a hiring manager will have the same experience. And you know, when it does come time for someone to cover for you, everything's the same. So it's not like the person that's covering for you is thrown for a loop. Well, I was definitely thrown for a loop. Um, my coworker's organization style and how she keeps up with our things is not as meticulous, I guess, as mine or thorough as mine. So I was left in the dark in regards to a lot of the stuff that she had going on. And so I've just been really scrambling to keep up the past week. 
and just try to get my hands around what she actually has going on on her plate because um, it's hard to tell. So I had my I had a call with my boss today and she's actually the one that called it out, not me, of like, oh yeah, I, I'm gonna make sure that when she gets back that we're gonna have a talk about organization and keeping up the tracker and just like communication levels because yeah, I feel a little bit thrown to the wolves. I felt a little bit thrown to the wolves the past week and I'm managing. Uh, she gets back tomorrow, but I don't want to leave her in just as bad of a state as she left me. So I'm gonna work tonight to just try to put as many bows on things, tie up as much stuff as I can because yeah, it's just, it, ha it wasn't ideal. It wasn't ideal or fun. And I'm like, we had our update. I'm like, all of the stuff on my side is moving along pretty nicely. And you know, I can give you a status update on everything I'm working on. But when it comes to my coworkers stuff, I'm just playing whack-a-mole over here, trying to like, trying to stay, stay above water. Cause it's just kind of a mess. And she was like, yeah, I know. Um, well, I'll talk to her about it. It's just like, I don't know, maybe she was in vacation brain before she left and was just like, meh, see ya. <laughs> so I don't know. But anyway, it's, it is what it is. We'll get through it. And, um, the, the hiring managers that I have been working with seem really happy with what I've been able to do since I've been working on her stuff. So it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's just not easy. We had a pretty major snafu today. Um, you know, one of our, one of our responsibilities when we're, um, collecting candidates and applicants is we have to make sure that the candidate meets the minimum requirements for the position. So like, let's say if it, if the requirements of the position say you have to have five years of experience and a bachelor's and X, Y, Z certifications, then it's our responsibility as applicants and resumes come in to make sure that they check off those boxes before we send them to the manager for additional review. So we're kind of that first um, kind of gate that they have to get through um, to make sure that they can, they cover at least those. And, and there's room for flexibility. Like let's say someone has a master's and it requires a bachelor's and two years of experience. Well, we'll count those extra two years in college for those two years of work experience. So it's not like a be all end all. Um, we can, we can kind of move experience and education around to make it all line up. As long as the number of years in general are there, that's kind of what matters. But one of the things that we are not able to be flexible on is like specific certifications. So if someone is supposed to have like a journeyman's plumber license or um, a paralegal certification, that's stuff that we can't, we can't move around. Like you have certifications are separate from everything else. Like for instance, it's, if we're hiring a nurse, they need to, <laughs> have gone through the proper schooling and get the right certifications. They can't just be like, well, I have my master's in something not nursing. Doesn't that take care of that? It doesn't work like that. So, um, so somehow, some way, a bunch of candidates, uh, for one of my coworkers positions got through. I, I don't know what happened, but they got through without, some of them did not have that the required certification. And so when she went on vacation, these, a bunch of people were in interview process. Well, the hiring manager selected somebody and this hiring manager is a tough cookie, not the friendliest person in the world, not easy to please. I, I've only worked with her once when I very first started. So it was already like pulling teeth to get a candidate selected. Well, I'm responsible for putting together a hiring recommendation. So the, the hiring manager selected the candidate. She was like, I love her. She'll work that this is finally, this will be done. They've been working on this pro this, this hire for months and months. 
So it was like, okay, cool. So I came in at the time when the candidate had been selected. And so I have to put together a hiring recommendation in which I have to review the resume and say, okay, based off of their years of experience and certification levels and years of professional experience, here's how much I'm recommending we pay this person based off of our salary band. Well, I went to go do my little audit of the resume so I could type it all together. And I was like, wait, this person says they're not there. They don't have their certification and they're expected to have it in 2024. I was like, according to the minimum requirements, this is a bar for entry. So how did this person even end up in the hiring manager's hands? So I'm thinking all this and I'm like, I don't know the full story. I'm just covering while she's on vacation. Maybe there's already been conversations and communication and everything's okay. But I told the hiring manager, I messaged her and I was like, hey, I just wanted to touch base. It, it looks like, you know, this candidate that you've selected for the role doesn't have the certification to meet minimum requirements. Is this something that, you know, my coworker, the other recruiter, is this something that you discussed? And if so, can you send me just the email so I know I'm in the loop because I have no, I have nothing about this. And she was very snarky. It's like, I don't see how someone with 15 years of experience and we're only needing five, I don't think it, I don't know if it's necessary for them to have this certification and, you know, kind of just blew up on me. Hold on. So yeah, just got extra snarky with me like, well, if this person didn't meet the qualifications, why did you send them in the first place? And, you know, this is your mistake and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, hey, I'm just covering. So take, take two giant steps back and then grab a seat and sit down. Like, I don't deserve to be treated like that. Hey, hey, stop. Apollo, stop it. Apollo. Hey, hey, can you just walk? forward like a normal dog. Hey, what? Apollo. Hey, stop. You're crazy. Hi. Okay. That was weird. Okay. Um, so yeah, I was just like, you, you got to get off my back. I'm just, see, I, I'm playing by the rules. I have to play it by the book. And I'm not going to move forward in this hiring process unless someone can confirm that we've accounted for this lack of a required certification. Like, I can't put somebody in a role that, you know, that is, that they're not qualified to do and put somebody's, like, safety or health at risk. And even if it's not that serious, you know, what if there's other candidates out there that we did decline because they didn't have a certification and yet we're letting this person through? Like that is a potential like discrimination um, uh, claim if somebody got wind of that, you know, or maybe there's somebody internally that was passed up for a promotion because they haven't received that certification. And then we're going to hire somebody external that doesn't have it. That could also be a huge problem. So I'm like, I just have to play it by the books, no matter how much you love this person. You know, if they, if they don't meet it, they don't meet it. And so she just put up this huge stink. And I was like, I'm not going to go back and forth with you on this. I'm just going to push this up to my supervisor. And at first, my manager was like, well... Let me take a look at the job description and see what it says, but we may be able to, you know, um, uh -huh. um, we may be able to consider her X amount of years of extra experience as acceptable in lieu of the certification. I was like, okay, no problem. Like if, if the case is that we can move forward, great, because I just want this, I just want this off my plate. So if we can just move forward and, and you know, mo and move on, that would be kind of the ideal situation because I'm sick of talking to this hiring manager, to be honest. So she's like, yeah, I think we can do that. Let me, let me just look at the job description, talk to compensation, and make sure that I'm reading this right. I was like, okay. All right. Good. 
come on. Um, so I was like, let me just make sure that I'm reading this right. And, or that's what she, she was like, let me just double check. I'll get back to you this afternoon. And I was like, okay, well, keep me posted because this hiring manager is like, got her entire hand down my throat, you know? So I was hoping for the news that it would be fine and we could just move on. Because I, I don't like wasting everybody's time. I mean, they, this person's gone through a phone screen plus interviews plus, you know, done a tour of the the building, like gone through everything. And now we're to the final stage. Um, hold on. Come on. Um, so to tell a candidate... Not only did you waste your time, did we waste everybody's time with all these interviews, but you never should have been, you never should have been sent to the hiring manager for review in the first place. Like, you shouldn't even have made it to an initial stage based off of your certification level. Like, that really sucks, and that's a bad candidate experience too. Um, so I was like, well, hopefully it all works out. Well, a few hours later, my boss called me and she's like, yeah talk to compensation and that certification is a non-negotiable so this person is not eligible for this position so we're going to have to and, and keep in mind higher when we get to this stage the candidate has, hasn't been offered anything yet they just interviewed we they selected them and then I put together how much we're going to pay them essentially and um, she was like yeah so we're going to have to dismiss this candidate, see if there are alternates, if any, and if not, we have to start from scratch, like months of advertising and stuff. And so I was like, oh boy. And not only that, when they make their final selection, the, our coordinators go in and dismiss all of the other interviewees. So they receive an email saying, Thanks, but no thanks. So even if we are to select an, an alternate, we have to go back and be like, just kidding. That email was incorrect. You actually are being offered the job. Um, there should be like a, a known etiquette that like, if you're at the top of a hill, you come down, you have the easier path rather than stopping at the top to watch the fatty huff and puff all their way up a hill and giving them a look like you're holding me up. I'm like, just go. That way I can struggle up this hill in peace. <laughs> it happened once before on a vlog that we did. It was in the snow where we were going up this steep hill and this couple just stopped at the top of it and just watched me. And I'm like, <sighs> I'm like, guys, this is embarrassing and you've made it embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just hit a mile, but I feel like we haven't even started talking, so let's, let's keep going. Um, so, it's very pretty up here, by the way. <sighs> ha la la. Um, so, yeah, it's just a poor experience all around. Wasted a ton of time, a ton of man hours, money... Um, because we weren't being thorough in verifying that the candidates that were applying were actually eligible for the role. So I think that's going to have some blowback. Luckily, it's not like, this is definitely not, I don't work for a company that's like off with their head when you really make a mistake like that. But it's something that has happened in the past and we've explicitly been reminded, like, take your time, look over these resumes, make sure. Okay. Sorry, ran out of battery. We're back, though. Um, but yeah, just, like, take your time when reviewing these resumes and make sure everything checks out before you send them to a hiring manager. Because hiring managers, yeah, they'll look at that stuff. But they are just under the assumption that if we send it to them, then it's fair game. Like, 
there, there isn't a double check, you know, like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, they only have four years instead of five. Like they see somebody and they're like, Ooh, this looks good. I'm going to, uh, let's interview them. Let's, let's go, let's go. So, you know, it, uh, most of the ownness on that, or I guess all of the ownness on reviewing resumes for initial qualifications is on us. So I'm really diligent about that. And if I am going to, you know, move numbers around to make the math work, I always put a justification um, if that candidate ends up being selected. So I'll always put some sort of justification of like, I understand that this candidate has, ooh, what is that? What is that? That is a deer, an elk. I can't tell. Let's, let's get a little closer. Oh, I think it's, I don't know, you'll have to tell me if you can see. There's one sitting and one standing. I can't tell. I think they might be elk. Oh, there's more. Do you see them, everyone? There's one running right now, straight in front of us. Is that a deer or elk? Do you see it, Apollo? This might be a good time to turn around. I don't want to mess with them. Hey, hey, easy. Go slow. You don't want to get trampled. You get kicked. They're just trying to live their lives. Let me zoom in. And then we'll go. You see it right there? There's a couple. There's one sitting down right there. This camera does a little bit of a pan out. Oh, there's three of them. Um, just a normal filming. Whoops, sorry. So this is zoomed in almost all the way, but they're, they're close, like just, just right there. But just with the way this camera works, it's, it's always a little bit more of a panoramic so you can like see Apollo and everything. But yeah, there's some, there's some little elks. Apollo, I, I'd love to get a beautiful nature shot, but I also want to respect their space. So let's turn around. We've done 1.14 miles. Come on, we're going this way. Let's go back. You got to let them live their life. Come on. Come on. I know you love it. Um, is there more? He's, he's very curious. He's only been off leash. Well, he's been off leash a couple of times when we've seen an elk, but he gets so like, rather than immediately chasing, he will, he just stops and freezes and is like, what the heck is that? And that gives me enough time to clip him up before he processes the situation but there was one time where we were hiking over in boulder and i had him off leash and he saw a deer kind of off in then the distance kind of in some brush and this was i think last summer when he was you know obviously just a little just a pup and he bolted and i was screaming for him and crying and he finally came back to me because he just, I had no idea where he went. And of course the deer took off, so he took off and I couldn't find him. And I was probably searching and screaming for him for about 20 minutes before he finally came over this little ridge and came plopping up to me. And I was like, don't ever do that again. Um, but ever since then, if he's seen an elk or something, he'll like freeze. I'm like, easy, I'll clip him up and then we turn around. I just don't like, I mean, we could absolutely walk through their little path there and scare them off, but I'm like, they're the ones trying to eat and get nutrition and like survive the winter. I'm just here on a, on a walk. So I just tend to leave them alone and let them do their business and find a different path. Like I can always find a different way to walk. Anyway, so long, long story long, I don't think that there's going to be any major repercussions, but it's just like, I don't like the feeling that it erodes the trust that our organizational team has with HR and recruitment. Like every time something like this happens, it's a lot, you know, it's forgiven, but not forgotten. And I, you know, next time I work with that hiring manager, 
I know I'm gonna hear something along the lines of like, can we make sure that they meet the minimum quals this time? Like, you know, there's gonna be something. So they're doing some kind of light show off in the distance there. I don't know if you can see it. That's one of the speedways in town. I thought it shut down, but apparently they're doing something. Maybe it's like a Christmas light thing. Let's go. Let's go. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of what happened at work. It's a bummer. You know, part of me is thankful that it wasn't my, it wasn't my mistake. Because I've done that before myself where we offered someone a position and turns out we couldn't hire them. So we had to backtrack, um, which really sucked. But that's when, you know, we got the reminder, like, don't let this happen again. And then it happened. So we'll see. We'll see. But, yeah, I just... It's just been an interesting week at work. He's really going for it, huh? Yeah. I guess now I'm the one standing at the top of the hill. He's going for it. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Thanks. There's some elk on the path a little yeah, ways up. I saw them before. Okay. Have a good night. Come on. Come on. Why are you jumping at bikes today? That's not like you. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Whoop. Come on. Come on. Stop messing around. Get it together, bro. Um. So yeah, well, well, it's it's gonna be dealt with between my supervisor and the other recruiter. So it just I just don't like to see it when it happens. Um, but that's that's work stuff. It'll all be over tomorrow when the other recruiter gets back, and I can go back to focusing on my own stuff. And and also in between that, we've had a bunch of new positions come in, and it's usually customary. Like if you're on vacation then the other recruiter will pick up any new recruitments. That way they're not just sitting there, you know, in limbo until you get back. And it's been so quiet for like the past month, like not a lot of requisitions. And then of course my coworker leaves and we get like six new hires, like adding an extra, you know, 40% to my workload. And so it's customary for me to just take them all. And I'm like, Ugh. You picked the perfect time to go on vacation, didn't you? You left me with a mess and a whole bunch of new work. <laughs> so, eh, whatever. Um, come on. Come on. Let's see where we're at. We closed our exercise ring. That's good. Um, so, yeah, diamond painting stuff. Oh, other life stuff. I had a doctor's appointment today on top of everything else. Um, I have this, like, I have a cystic pimple on my neck that I started developing a few weeks ago, uh, kind of right around when I got sick. And usually when that happens, it's usually on my face. I've never had one on my neck before. And so when that happens, it gets, you know, the little boil, the big boil, gets big enough that I can, you know, TMI, I can pop it myself. Um, and of course it drains and does all the nasty stuff. And then I just, you know, put a Band-Aid on it or a hydrocolloid patch. Well, this one on my neck, because it's just soft neck, neck stuff underneath it I, I couldn't get to it enough to like extract it myself like it was really in there and I you know spent several days you know tw twice a day trying to give it a good squeeze and I just was destroying the skin around it trying to like squeeze and pinch at it and I was like enough I'm the skin around it is all you know hyper pigmented and raw um, so I was like, forget it. We're going to let the dermatologist <laughs> handle this. I, I can't, I can't destroy my neck for the sake of trying to pop this pimple that's like really in there. Hold on. Thank you. Uh-huh. Thank you. Hi. 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 
Bud Light. Sure. Come on. Come on. Um. <clears throat> So yeah, I was like, I, I can't I can't keep trying to destroy my skin. And I could have gone and got one of the extraction tool kits, like the little pokey needle thing and stabbed it myself. But it seemed pretty deep set in there. So I was like, what if that doesn't work? What if I end up just injuring myself more? And it's my neck, it's like right next to my Adam's apple. I was like, you know what? Let's go ahead and let a professional do this. This is why I pay for insurance. So I went to the dermatologist today and they were like, well, we could cut it, you know, slice it open and yank it out that way, but you're gonna have a scar on your neck and we wanna, and we wanna go as least invasive as possible. So they ended up giving me a numbing shot um, since it's close to my neck and everything. Um, she was like, it could be a little bit painful in that area. It's a little bit more tender. So they gave me some numbing stuff and then they gave me a steroid shot right into where it is. And they said it'll take a month at least, sometimes up to two, three months for, the, for it to break up all of that stuff. But she's like, I just want to let you know that it also can break up some of the fat. And um, fat around that area, so you almost might have like a little bit of a depression once it's cleared. And it can also lighten the skin in that area, especially people like me with darker skin tones so you might actually see a little lighter skin spot there but the melanin should come back and the fat should come back and I was like okay so they did that and I'm so busy at work I have all these calls to make and they put that numbing stuff on so I felt like I had like a froggy voice just I don't know if it messed with my vocal cords or just the muscles in that area but for there for like a couple hours I was like Hi, it's Anthony with Denver. Oh, I just shouldn't say where I work. Um, hi, it's Anthony with where I work. And um, <laughs> um, and it went away, though. It went away pretty quickly. But, yeah, so that happened. And I've found that I, I don't go to the dermatologist that often. It's been, like, years since I've been, maybe, like, four years. I should go just to get, like, any moles and stuff. I really don't have have like a couple, but they've never changed shape or anything like that, or texture. Um, I've had them since I was a kid. But it's good to go get a checkup, and I am such a skincare nerd that like, depending on the dermatologist, I've had some that are all business, but this one, it was also connected to this like aesthetic clinic, so I think they also have this like aesthetic kind of spa mindset, even though it is a dermatology office. But she's like, tell me about your routine, and your skin looks really good, and I was like, are you kidding me? Like, I feel like it could be a lot better. And she's like, what are you using? So we're just like gabbing about Korean skincare. And um, they did prescribe me some hydroquinone to help with the hyperpigmentation and dark spots that I get where I shave and on my neck. Um, I've used that before when it was over the counter, but now it's a prescription only ingredient. And so they prescribed me a higher percentage than I've ever used before. So um, I got to pick up that prescription probably tomorrow or Friday and give it a shot. She was like, try it. You're supposed to use it for like two months and then cycle off for a month. Um, there are rare cases where it can actually have the reverse effect and make your dark spots way darker um, and change your skin tone. So you just have to be careful with that. It's very rare, but it's one of the reasons why it's now prescription. So you just have to be careful. So I've got that coming and then they're like since it's your first time here we're gonna send you home with like a little goodie bag and I was like okay they'll probably send me home with like a cleanser or something they gave me this like sack of like every sample size they must have had there they had a bunch of stuff that they only carry at their dermatology office like some smaller brands that I've never heard from they gave me a pile of stuff from Cetaphil a pile of stuff from La Roche-Posay a pile of stuff from Eucerin, um, a bunch of stuff from CeraVe, like all these different brands that I do use. They just like loaded me up. It was like, holy crap. They gave me like a full size sunscreen. I was like, this is awesome. And I think it's just because we were gabbing about skincare routines. They were like, let's give him, let's give him the, the good stuff and all of it. So I've got like a ton of stuff. I, I might use some of it for stocking stuffers because a lot of my friends 
also um, like skincare or they always ask me to give them my leftovers. So I was like, I could use these for stocking stuffers, but there's a bunch of stuff in there that I haven't tried before. So I'm really curious to use those up. And I'm like, maybe it'll get me to use the full size or I'll go buy it. And they put a bunch of coupons in there. It was just great. So I had a really good dermatologist appointment today. And she was like, since we have the aesthetic clinic next door, it's not covered by insurance, of course, but if you ever wanna come in and get a chemical peel or anything like that to help with your pigmentation, just let us know and I can refer you to our um, medical esthetician and they can get you all set up. And I was like, that would be nice to like have it all in one place. Um, I haven't done facials or um, chemical peels or, I've never done a chemical peel, but I haven't had a facial in, oh my gosh, probably at least, it's been 10 years for sure. <laughs> Um, so I'm like, you know what, maybe, you know, I can get back into that. And if they're willing to let me know what products they use ahead of time so I can make sure I'm not allergic to anything or even bring in my own stuff, it'd be nice to get a little, little pamper. So we'll see. I might call them and book another appointment. They want to see me again in four weeks to see how the cyst thing is progressing. So like, maybe I'll just book a facial and make a day of it. We'll see. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's life stuff. <laughs> um, as far as diamond painting goes, I made some more progress on, well, we'll just run through them. So I have Sunset Crossing from Craftably, not touched, but I think I might start on it soon, just to say it has drills down and finally officially call it a whip. So I've got that one. Then I have um, Woman in Gold, from Diamond Dots, no progress there. My two cross stitch conversions, no progress there. I keep going back and forth about what I wanna do with Darth Vader. Part of me wants to throw the canvas away and start over or suck it up, I haven't decided. <laughs> Some days I'm like, throw it all away. And other days I'm like, just suck it up. It's actually, it was actually moving relatively quickly. It's just the amount of gapping and how that can't that canvas glue was I just didn't like but we'll see haven't decided still have it and then Moussine Lab Moose no progress there and then I have all of the kits that I'm currently working on I have City Dreams from Distracted by Diamonds and Wes Reader it's like a 60 something by 90 something round um, I am about I think I'm three quarters of the way done with my second row. And once I finish that, I should technically be about 20% done with it, which will be nice. And then um, I got a chance to work on it a little bit last night and I'll probably do some more tonight. And then I have my uh, mystery kit from Jaded Gem Shop. I just started on my third column. So I'd say that one's about 25% done. And um, I probably won't work on that again until I'm done with at least another section of two or of city dreams because I'm trying to balance it like for every row I do of one I should have a row or a column done of the other so I'm a little ahead on the mystery kit because I just really like it I love working on that kit it's been a blast go take a look at Instagram for like the most up-to-date um, progress photos but I'm loving that kit let me get out of the way of this runner. I think she might have her dog. Come over here. Come over here. Apollo, you gotta, you gotta listen up. What's going on with you today? Hmm? Hi. Hey, hey, dude. I do, know, I do not know what's gotten into him recently. He's lost all of his no jumping at other dogs and bikes manners. Like he's just, I don't know if it's his energy level, but I'm like, we gotta practice that. Come on, you're being misbehaved, sir. Um, so yeah, I'm alternating between those two and having a blast. I definitely, I definitely like that mystery kit. I'm obsessed with it. It's not like, it's not an image 
this will be a little spoiler. It's not an image that has like a ton of different focal points and features. It's very background heavy, which at first I was like, ooh, that might bog me down. Like not seeing like, you know, something come together every, you know, couple sections. It's just, a, it's pretty background heavy with like one focal point and the focal point's gonna be towards the end of the project for me. So I'm like, ah, I can't wait to get there. But there's enough color variants and there, and it's just the fact that it is a mystery. So you see the colors together as you work on it. It's really keeping me motivated. It's kind of what I love about cross-stitch conversion, having a white background, but it takes the ease or it makes it easy because you're not referencing like an iPad or a tablet or a pattern. You're just, you're just following the canvas still. So it's like the best of both worlds, I think for me. So I don't know, I might be a, a, like, I might be a lover of mystery kits. I think I've probably said that before, but I'm just really enjoying that kit. Um, and it's not like a ton of colors, um, but it's enough to keep me interested. I think there's 51, I think, maybe. Yeah, I think there's 51. And then the City Dreams has 45. So I've got those two. And then I have another whip that I worked into into the rotation um this I'll, i think i'll be able to it, it'll be fully announced tomorrow which is thursday there might be a delay i'm not sure but i can at least talk about i can at least talk about it a little bit i think so uh francesca over at francesca studio works they recently launched their pre-packaged diamond painting kits i think last week and Francesca reached out to me and asked if I would be interested in doing an unboxing for her. Just did two miles. So I was like, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm kind of on this kick of trying new shops right now or trying to work on uh, kits from shops I've never worked, you know, I've never experienced before. So I was like, sure, send it over. So I got that late last week, filmed my unboxing. And I was like, I kind of have no choice but to just kit this up and get going on it. Like I'm really excited to experience it. And it's a round drill kit and Francesca Studio Works uses resin round and squares. So I love me a resin round. So I kitted it up uh, as part of that uh, unboxing. So you'll get a little extra peek at the kitting up process. I'm not gonna say what the kit is or the image or anything. I'll let, the, I'll let my video do that. So go check it out if it's posted. It's supposed to go up tomorrow, but um, Francesca, I, Francesca was like, you know, I'll, I'll let you know when, you know, I'm ready for that to go up. And I like to give shops that um, that courtesy and flexibility. Like, you tell me when you're ready for it, because either you need to make sure your stock levels are right. Not that I'll sell out a kit or anything, but I just want to make sure if people see it and they get excited, they don't go to the site and it's not there. So she's going to work on making sure everything's good to go on her end, so we have plans for tomorrow. It's already filmed, so all I have to do is hit, click post, you know. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited about that. The image is really cool. And I started working on it the next day and worked on it through the weekend, and I'm already one uh, row complete. So I'd say with that one, probably about 20% complete as well. So it's not a, it's not a super huge kit. So I'm going to try to work on that some more either tonight after I'm done uh, with a section of City Dreams or that'll be uh, just my project that I do on the weekends. And I, I would really like to get that done like quickly so I can put together a finish and review. Um, so people do have, um, have some information regarding a shop that just launched prepackaged kits a week ago. I think... I, what I'd love to have happen is I'd love to be the first one to finish a prepackaged kit from her shop. That would be a cool little little badge to have. So um, yeah, I'm gonna try to crank through on that one. And I'm not feeling really burnt out or anything on diamond painting. Like I'm just enjoying it for what it is. And even though I do have a, a couple goals, at least with that kit in mind, it's not feeling overwhelming. And um, yeah, I, I'm excited. I, I want to I wanna see if I can be the first one to finish a Francesca's Studio Works 
uh, diamond painting kit. We'll see. We'll see. There might be some other folks out there that have already placed their orders last week and are, and cause she does have some that are more like quote unquote snack size too. So I'm like, maybe there's somebody out there that snagged one of her snack size kits and is like, yeah, I got that done in a day, but I'd, I'd like to be close to the first one, if not the first one. So we'll see, but that's go what's going on with diamond painting stuff. Um, I will be doing another kind of sneak peek slash unboxing from the Creativity Squirrel. Um, I'll be partnering with that shop on an upcoming unboxing. I just don't know when it gets in. Um, you have to go through the scary tunnel. Hold on. Do not pull me down. Hey, easy. Okay. Let's go through the scary tunnel. Um... Yeah, so I have Creativity Squirrel coming in. Ooh, this is really creepy. I do not like this. Um, and then I also have uh, nothing else coming in, but I have a couple of small shops on my list that I'm most likely gonna purchase from soon. Even though I've been really steadfast on my no buy, I, I want to start experiencing as many new shops as I can within reason without having a stash of new shops, like just one or two at a time, finish one or two and then rinse and repeat. So I think the next ones that are gonna be on my list, I don't remember even the, I don't even remember the name of the shop, but um, it's one that Katie over at Diamonds and Washi, she's this, I think she's on her second kit from them. It's like Diamond something UK and she's mentioned, she mentioned when she did her last one, I think it was called like Sweet Shop of the number of colors and the amount of confetti was like really high. And I was like, ooh, like that piqued my interest. And then she's working on another kit right now. I forget the name of it, but it's from that same shop. And she's like, this one feels like it's even more confetti heavy. And I was like, oh. <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? Maybe I can uh, give, uh, give a super high confetti shop uh, a try or a super high confetti kit to try that's pre-packaged as opposed to like Moussine Lab Moose where I have to get the pattern out and stuff. It's like maybe that'll be a different experience. And I've never even been on that shop site so I need to poke around and see what they have. But I'd like to pick something up from them. Um, and then I'd also like to uh, pick up something from Rose Profit Creations. Um, that's a shop that I've done a spotlight from that artist. This, it's, it's a shop that I've been meaning to purchase from for a while and I just, it keeps slipping my mind. It keeps getting pushed to the back burner. But um, Rose Profit Creations carries some artwork from Hannah over at Iterations Crafts, which is like one of my favorite artists. So I'm um, like, maybe I can start collecting Hannah's images from like every shop that carries her stuff. So that's now on my list too. Most likely this this week is to pick up a kit from by Hannah from Rose Profit Creations just to give the product a try. Um, and yeah, there's a couple other shops that I can't recall the name of just offhand that I've seen pop up on my recommendations on Etsy a couple times. There's some other shops that have just kind of uh, come on my radar as I've been diamond painting, but then either I forget about them or um, at the time there wasn't any artwork that piqued my interest, but I wanna at least see what the quality's like and and try like, I love to try a round and a square from each shop too, cause I, I feel like those can be very different experiences. So we'll see, I'm not sure if the, the shop uh, that Katie's, one of Katie's current whips is from, or, you know, that the kit is from <laughs> that she's working on. I don't know if they carry rounds. I feel like both of the projects she was working on were both squares, so I'll have to investigate that. Um, but I think Rose Profit Creations carries round and square. I'm not sure what their drill, um, drill material is either, if it's resin for all these shops or acrylic, but that's part of the review process. I, I really don't mind either way as long as, um, as long as it's not like detrimental to the success of completing the kit. So, so yeah, that's kind of what's going on in the diamond painting world. 
is I, I'm ready to get into some new shops. They'll probably be a focus of mine next year. I've got Astronomer from Diamond Art Club that I have to do in, um, that I'm going to do in January and February for me as Diamond Paint Along. And then other than that, I'm like, maybe I'll just save Moosinay, Lab Moose, and Women in Gold for next year's summer with the Masters and pick up where I left off. And that'll just leave the rest of the year open to um, mixing in some new shops as well as trying to work through my current stash. Um, and yeah, we'll see, we'll see. I have so many, like even though I've de-stashed and it feels much more reasonable, I still have like years worth of diamond paintings. Like, uh, what is it called? Um, the Last Supper is gonna take me probably an entire year to complete on its own. Then I have Garden of Earthly Delights. That's gonna take probably over a year at least to complete just with the size and scale of it. It's just, it's huge. And I still wanna get the other, the other matching pieces of that, um, of that artwork. And each of those is half the size of the middle one. So that's another year's worth. Like, I mean, realistically, <laughs> with the stuff that I want to get that's on my wish list and what I have, I've got a decade <laughs> of diamond painting ahead of me. Um, like even looking at just like what I finished this year, I'll be at about 15 kits and I've got like almost 80, I think close to 80 in my stash, 70 something. So it's like, all right, well, 15, 30, 45, 60, so that, that 75, that's five years. And some of those kits are like the size of four normal kits, you know? So I've got enough and I, I don't know. I, I think. Uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up here in a second because I'm circling the parking lot and it's pitch black. But I think um, I've just been in, in a better mood in general, have like a better outlook on things in general. Not only my car, you know, being repaired, it's still in the shop, but I have the loaner vehicle and figuring out my house stuff. Um, but also, you know, I am now, Saturday will be the one month mark of me being a sober Sally. And I think it's definitely like, you know, adjusted my overall mood. And I think this is the trail that we go up. Yeah, this is a little shortcut. We're going off script here. Come on. Um, my mood and outlook has just generally been better. Like, I feel like, I don't know. I, things feel like they're improving now that I've, I don't, I stopped drinking. And like I said, I wasn't necessarily a heavy drinker, but definitely a consistent drinker. Um, energy levels have gone up, lost some weight, skin's looking a little bit better. But the other thing is like my desire to like do more or like just like get more done or like, you know, that task oriented side of my brain seems to be like going off extra hard. And my confidence has definitely improved a little bit. So like, I just feel like I can do that thing. Like this is easily, this will be attainable for me as opposed to like, this is never gonna happen. Cause like even with diamond painting, like I gotta de-stash all this stuff. Like this is just too much. And now I'm like, no, I like, I got this. And it's the same with work and the same with social situations too. I feel like a lot more, just like a positive outlook on things. And that could, once again, could be completely placebo, but if it, if it's doing it, if it works, it works, you know? So just generally feeling good. So yeah, bring on the diamond painting. Let's, let's get this done. I can, I can knock out a bunch of kits and get exercise and take care of Apollo and kick butt at work. I can do it. So yeah, that's kind of where my mind's at. <laughs> But anyway, uh, we're just getting back to the parking lot, so I'll let you go. But thanks for coming along on our little stroll. We did 2.54 miles. That should be enough for the boy tonight. And we'll probably do some more vlogging this weekend. you most likely see some unboxings from me or unboxing. And I may try to do a couple extra little things here and there over the course of the next couple weeks too. I've got some ideas. So 
Don't forget to like, subscribe, share this content with friends, family members, anyone that you think might take some value out of it. Otherwise, happy placing. We'll see you next time. Bye, 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 bye. Come say bye. Say bye. Okay. Bye.